Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 13. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 1, click on the link below the video. All right, so multiplying and dividing. We've already done some multiplying and dividing in this class, but let's look at a few important things. Uh, here's an invoice. So we have some products, number bought, and price each. All right, so we're multiplying, and it looks like there's decimals, so I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to go straight to the round function. This times this, All right? So multiplying, we are aware that we're not, we can't just do straight multiplying here, or we are, but we want to make life easy on ourselves, so we're going to use the round function because it'll round for us. Now, this is an invoice, so it's to a penny, so I'm going to do two. Right, and I'm just showing those extra decimals to make, make sure that we uh, went ahead and rounded properly. Now, a subtotal, alt equals, I'm actually going to not include that cell there. I'm going to redirect it. Tax, ah, we're multiplying, and there's the tax rate. Again, we're multiplying decimals, so I'm not going to mess around. Right? Hey, by the way, sometimes when you're multiplying decimals, it, it comes out exactly perfect, right? But I'm not going to mess around. Okay, again, it's an invoice. We're handing out pennies here and there, so there we go. Two. And now total. Alt equals. Now, I want to highlight both of these because I need the subtotal from up here and the tax. No round there because I've already rounded. All of these are rounded. Is that one rounded there? Yes, of course, because this is rounded. When it's adding, it's never going to, if, if it's adding rounded numbers, there's never going to be a problem. Right now, if this is an invoice, of course, you'd want to decrease the decimals. Now, here we use the multiplication symbol, right? If you have a bunch of things to multiply, just like there's a sum function, there's a product function, right? Equals product. Now, product is the word that means the answer from multiplying. Now in chapter 7 we'll see we'll learn about series discounts for invoicing when you are uh, buying wholesale and we'll have to do this. So there you go. You could use the product function. Enter. That would be the same as equals this times this times this. Uh, same thing here. Um, equals product. I don't know why I put two here. Right, so in uh, chapter seven, we'll see this is the net cost equivalent. So we'd multiply that times the retail price, and that'd be how much we pay as a business. All right, now um, division. Here's a great example we can all relate to, I think. In chapter three, we'll compare parts to the whole. We'll do per, what's it's the percent chapter, but we'll do all sorts of amazing things with uh, percents. And one of them is, hey, uh, we're gonna we have a part, meaning here's the totals that some students got in class, and you need to compare it to the total to get your decimal or percentage grade. All right. So what do you do? These are parts, right? Now, the one part, let's change. Joe got 500, got exactly perfect, right? So this is a part. It just happens to be exactly equal to the whole, right? And actually, in chapter 3, we'll see you can have more uh, than the actual original thing you're comparing these parts to. All right, but this is a small part compared to there. That's the whole. By the way, if we're doing division, can you guess right off the bat? What's 500 divided by 500? Yeah, that, that's right. It's 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. 10 divided by 10 is 1. Really, division, if I go, e, oh, let's just do it. Any, anything divided by itself will be 1. All right, equals that. That's the actual score. And then divided by, forward slash, the total for the class. Now, as I copy this down, the blue one needs to move. But I need to have that locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 key. Control Enter. And I'm going to double click and send it down. Zoop. Come to the last one and check. Whoa, that worked perfect. All right. Um, so that's an example of division. Here's another example. Here we have a weekly expense for the week. And we need to chop it into seven equal pieces to get our daily expense. So equals that. 
divided by 7. That number, 7, is never going to change for our particular business. And so there's 7 days in the week, so we can type that right into the formula. All right, and we would, if we were going to use that somewhere, we would either format it or use the round. But that's just an example of division. Now, what happens if you divide by 0? Let's just uh, try it. I'm going to take the numerator and the denominator. Now, what's the numerator? Now, here's an example down here. The top is the numerator. The bottom is the denominator. In Excel, 10 divided by 2, right? So this is the numerator. That's the denominator. Let's just see what happens. The denominator is in the bottom, right? Oh, yeah, 10 divided by 2 is 5. 10 divided by 1 is 10. Now, just notice something. What if I say 5 here? 2, 10. What direction is the answer going? As I increase the denominator, as I got bigger, it went towards 1, right? Let's go the other direction, 5. Oh, this is getting bigger. 2, that's getting bigger. 1, that's getting way big. What happens if I go less than 1? What's 10 divided by 1 half? Well, what's 10 divided by 1? How many 1's are there in 10? There's 10 ones, there's 10 of these ones in that 10. Well, how many 0.5s? That's a half. How many 0.5s are in 10? Well, double, right? Because 0.5 is half 1, so it better be 20. Let's go 0 0.25. Oh, 40. 0 0.01. 1,000. 0. 0.00000000001. A lot. But what happens if we put in 0? It's not allowed in math, right? Because you're asking the question, how many zeros are in 10? Well, I don't know the answer to that, right? So that's what will happen in Excel. You'll see divide by 0. So that's important to recognize that. A lot of times people will, well, anyway, so even if you have nothing in it, like people build templates and they have this divided by this, waiting for someone to put something there, but that's what you'll see, because divide by 0 is not possible. All right, now I'm going to do uh, one other thing here. This is not required. Example of remainder, fraction, and decimal. Now, we will talk about fractions and decimals next chapter. Uh, but I just want to, since we're talking about division, and in the book they do longhand division, which we're not going to do, numerator, denominator. So I want to figure out what the uh, answer is, including the remainder. Now, actually, let's just cut to the chase. We could do this equals the numerator divided by the denominator. And I'm going to hit tab. OK, 5.25, right? So if we were dividing up um, this dollar amount by 24, it would be $5.25 each, right? But let's do a little calculation over here to see what the whole number answer is and the remainder. All right, I'm going to take this 24, because the question is, how many 24s are in 126 when you're doing division. So I'm going to take 24, and I'm just going to kind of guess. I'm going to start with maybe 3, and I'm going to multiply. Equals 24 times 3. So 72, OK. I'm going to change this to 4, Control-Enter, 96. 5, Control-Enter, OK. I'm still below this 126, 6. Control enter. OK, so now I went above. So now I'm going to go back down one, 5. Now this 5 is our whole number answer. And actually, I see I accidentally put this here. I want to move this up there. So th that's the move cursor right, right there. That's the whole number answer. So if you're doing division, there's 5 24s in 126. But now we want to calculate the remainder. Well, if this is 5 times 24, 120, we simply subtract this. I'm take this and subtract this, and we will get our remainder. OK, now I'm going to show you there is a function to calculate that 5, and there is a function to calculate that remainder, the whole number and remainder, quotient and mod. Absolutely not required, but you know I'm talking about division, so I'm going to show you this, quotient. So it's right here, quotient. Numerator, denominator. Denominator, and then tab. So that'll give us that 5, that whole number. And then this is the strangest function. Mod, look, it doesn't even use numerator and denominator because it says number, 
comma, and divisor. That's a synonym for denominator. Right? So that'll give you the remainder. One other thing, and uh, we actually will learn this thing in chapter 2. I want to go equals this divided by this. All right. So that is, we can look up here, it says general. We know there's no um, applied number format. The general number format is there. I'm going to control 1, go to number. And no way, there's a fraction. Again, we'll talk about this next chapter. Look at that, 5 and 1 fourth. It'll actually even uh, reduce it down for you. Now, in chapter 2, we'll actually look at this and see it's a number format, so there is a way to get in trouble with it. But if you know how to use it, that's awesome, right? You can show your numbers as five and one fourth, and occasionally, you know, that's um, what you want to do. All right, so that's a little bit about multiplying and dividing. When we come back, we'll just talk about uh, exponents. All right, see you next video.